Up next, we're going to take a look at the MinIO console. So now that we've gotten our environment fired up and we've got a good root user and a good root password, let's take a look at how the console is going to function. So what's the difference between working through the console versus working through the SDK? Well, both the console and the SDK can do all of the S3 operations. You can do gets, posts, heads, deletes for your objects. You can manipulate object retention, lifecycle management, object encryption. You can work with buckets. All of that stuff can happen through the console or the SDK. The big difference is your administrative operations, like security, server settings, setting up users, all that other fun stuff, all of that has to happen through the console. So even as a developer, you may need to access the console to do certain things. The MinIO SDK is really just going to be manipulating objects and at some level manipulating some buckets. We have SDKs for Java and .NET, Go, and Python. Now, the Go SDK does have a little bit of admin functionality in it, but that's not common to all of the SDKs, so we're not getting into all of that stuff. All of the methods of connectivity here are using MinIO's S3 compliant REST API. It all supports TLS 1.2, so it's all secured from that level as well. The actual communications over that HTTP connection are all encrypted. But it doesn't matter if you're using the console or the SDK, they're both using that REST API underneath. As a matter of fact, there is a third way of communicating with your MinIO, and that is through the MinIO command line, which we're not really discussing in this course. But even the MinIO command line, which can do basically everything the console does. You can even manipulate users and stuff like that from the MinIO command line tool. We don't really discuss that in this course because it's not something that you as a developer are going to be working with much. But if you hear talk or you're reading documentation that's talking about the MinIO command line, just know that it's still using all of the same REST API underneath. It's still all going over HTTP. Let's take our first steps. Now that we've got our server up and running, what do I need to do to get ready to deploy my application so it can talk to MinIO? Well, first, you're going to log into the console. The root user and password, you set in the environment variables, connect to localhost 9090. If I'm running on a local deployment with no security, use HTTP. In production, you're going to be using something else. I'm talking about getting that proof of concept set up. So you're going to be using the local deployment. You're probably not going to have TLS enabled at this stage. So you're just going to go to HTTP localhost 9090, which is your console access port that you set up when you started running your container or your bare metal. The first thing you need to do is create a bucket. If I'm just doing a simple proof of concept and I don't care about versioning or any of that other stuff, just give the bucket a name. Don't worry about anything else. And then that's where your objects are going to live. Your application is going to interact with that bucket. The application we're writing in this lab is not going to be creating any buckets or doing anything else at that level. It's really just going to be manipulating data. And so we need a place for all of those data objects, all that object storage to live. So we need to set up a bucket. And then we definitely want to create a client user. We don't use that root user for client access ever. Don't do it. And we are going to create a dedicated user per application. I'm also going to create a dedicated bucket per application. And here's the important part. Your user access should follow the principle of least privilege. What does that mean? That means if your application only needs read access, don't set up a user that has read and write. If my application is only reading data and will never write anything back, I don't need a read write user. I just need a read user. We'll take a look at that here in just a second because I'm going to take you through a little demonstration.